Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Salatu wa salamu ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yumiddin Allahumma Allimna ma yanfa'una Wa anfa'na bima allamtana Wa zidna ilma Wa la takilna ila anfusina tarfata ayn Amma ba'id We continue reading from the book of As-Salah, Kitab As-Salah, Min Umlat Al-Ahkam, Nil Hafid Abdul Ghani Al-Makdisi, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, Bab Al-Mawakid. Wa Dhakara Al-Musannifu, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, Haditha Minha, and the author, he mentioned narrations in this chapter, we have covered some of them, and from them, he mentions, An Ali ibn Abi Talib, Radiyallahu Anhu, Anna Nabiya Sallallahu Alayhi Wa Sallam, Qala, يوم الخندق ملأ الله قبورهم وبيوتهم نارا كما شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى حتى غابت الشمس قال رحمه الله وفي لفظ لمسلم شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى صلاة العصر صل ثم صلاها بين المغرب والعشاء يعثر هي مجنى ناريشن of علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله Anhu, and he is Al-Khalifa, Al-Rashid, Al-Rabi' Radiyallahu Anhu, the fourth upright, upright and rightly guided Khalifa Min Al-Khulafa, Al-Rashidin, Al-Mahdiin Ali ibn Abi Talib, Radiyallahu Anhu He died in the year 40 after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was the first youth and boy to accept al Islam. It's known that the first man to accept al Islam is Abu Bakr, and the first boy to accept Islam from the from the youth, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu wa an sahabati ajma'in. The first woman, Khadija, and the first slave. Bilal ibn Abi Rabah and the first Mawla, free slave, Zayd ibn Harith رضي الله عنهم وعن الصحابة أجمعين He mentioned the narration of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه He said that the Prophet, he said صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم الخندق On the day of, of the trench On the day of the trench May Allah fill their graves and their homes with fire just as they have preoccupied us from the middle prayer until the sun has set. The author, he says, and in one wording by Muslim, they preoccupied us from the middle prayer, the prayer of Asr. And then uh, he mentioned, radiyallahu anhu, thumma sallaha bain al-maghrib wa isha And then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed it between al-maghrib and al-isha, meaning the the Asr prayer. After this, the author likewise he mentioned Walahu, and he would be Muslim. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, رضي الله عنه أنه قال حبس المشركون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن صلاة العصر حتى حمرت الشمس أو أسفرت. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم شغلونا عن الصلاة الوسطى صلاة العصر. ملأ الله أجوافهم وقبورهم نارا أو حشى حشى الله أجوافهم وقبورهم نارا And he mentioned likewise another wording from Muslim from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud رضي الله عنه that he said that the, the mushrikun the polytheist meaning uh, the pagans of Quraysh they had uh, kept the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from praying Salat al-Asr. They had prohibited him from praying Salat al-Asr. And we have seen uh, this narration is uh, in the same event that had occurred in the in the previous narration, Yawm al-Khandaq, as mentioned in the narration of Ali, radiyallahu anhu, Yawm al-Khandaq, the day of the trench, also known as Yawm al-Ahzab, or Ghazwat al-Khandaq, or Ghazwatu, Al-Ahzab, the battle of the trench or the battle of the confederates. And whenever all of the different tribes uh, of the Arabs, they gathered 
with Quraysh and they came to Medina and they tried to raid Medina in order to to uh, kill the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and, and to destroy uh, the Muslims. That was their plot. And it was on this day, the day of Al-Khandaq, the day of the trench, also known as uh, the Ghazwa Al-Ahzab. Al-Ahzab, yani the Confederates or the parties, the different groups, because the Arabs, they gathered, and the different tribes, they gathered with Abu Sufyan uh, on that day. Uh, uh, and they all came uh, to al Madina, And it's mentioned that there were 10,000 of them, 4,000 from, from Quraysh, and the rest from the different tribes of the Arab. So on this day, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he mentions, this was in the fifth year of the Hijrah. The, uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he mentions, Habas al-Mushrikuna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Salat al-Asr. That the pagans, they prohibited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from praying the Asr prayer. Hatta ahmarrat al-shamsu wa asfarrat. Until the sun became red or became yellow. And it's a doubt from one of the narrators uh, of, the, of the narration, whether it was whenever it was red or whenever it was yellow. We've seen that whenever the sun becomes yellow at the Asr time, this is the end of the time that is preferred or the proper time to pray. And after that is whenever it is the time of necessity. And if the sun has become red, then this is even closer to the sunset. So in the previous narration, it mentioned Ali, uh, Ali he mentioned Allahu until the sun went down entirely. So some of the ulama they mentioned that this possibly occurred more than one day uh, in that battle, that they were delayed and they were preoccupied by battling and fighting the mushrikeen and protecting the borders of Al Madina and the lights like this until they were preoccupied throughout the whole entire day and they were not able to establish the prayer. At its proper time, until the, the Asr prayer, until the sun set, that this possibly is an indication that it happened more than one time. And Allah knows best. And this narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Shaykhuluna an as al wusta. They preoccupied us and they busied us uh, until we uh, have become preoccupied with the middle prayer. And then he clarified which middle prayer that is, or what is the middle prayer, Salat al Asr. The, the prayer of Al-Asr. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he supplicated against uh, those pagans. And he said, Mala Allahu ajwafahum wa quburahum naran. May Allah fill their insides and their graves, the insides of their bodies and their graves with fire. Or he said, Oh, hasha Allahu ajwafahum wa quburahum uh, nara. Or he said, hasha. Hasha means to pile. And to load on top of the other to fill up any and even more streams. So whenever he said Hasha, may Allah fill it and pile their hearts and and, uh, and uh, with or their their bodies with fire and their graves. And he on top of fire on top of fire. Yeah, then Billah. Supplication against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi. Wasallam uh, for those polytheists that had preoccupied them with uh, with battle and with war until they were not able to establish the prayer at its proper time, the prayer of Al Asr. So the narration of Ali radiAllahu anhu and the narration of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud here that has been mentioned. This is with regards. This is with regards to the day of Al Khandaq. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he's from the first of those to accept Islam likewise. And it's mentioned that he was, it's, he was, Sari uh, Susitta, uh, that he was the sixth of six to accept Al Islam. He had made the Hijra uh, to Habasha and likewise to Al Madina. And he was from those who were known to recite the Quran properly and had been advised by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the, for the believers to learn the Qur'an from him, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. And it's mentioned that he was the one who resembled the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most with regards to his manners and his demeanors and his etiquettes and the way that he would carry himself and the way that he would walk radiallahu anhu. Even some of the companions, whenever they first came to al Madina, they thought that Abdullah bin Mas'ud and his mother, uh, Um uh, Abd, they thought that they were from the family of the Prophet ﷺ because of how much they will be with him and entering into his home. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, that great companion from the first and foremost to accept Islam and from the most knowledgeable of the companions with regards to the Quran and the Sunnah, from the greatest understanding from the Fuqaha 
وعلماء الصحابة رضي الله عنه. So these narrations they are with regards to this day and what occurred on that day or that battle and those days and the battle of Al Khandaq and also known as the battle uh, of Al Ahzab, the battle of Al Ahzab. But uh, the purpose for the author mentioning this narration or these narrations here is to clarify the ruling of the prayer that is missed. After we have seen in the previous narrations, the narration of Jabir and likewise the narration of Abi Barza radiallahu anhuma, that the prayer must be established at the proper time. And we have seen the times for the prayer and that is legislated. In the Salat Kanat Ala Mu'minina Kitab al Muquta. Now there's the issue that if a believer was not able to establish it in that time, what is the ruling for this salat? And how should that and how should that salat be performed? If a believer prayed uh, was delayed by and not able to pray the prayer in its proper time, and the salat got delayed all the way till outside of its proper time, what is the ruling for this prayer? What is the manner to perform this prayer? Is it uh, permissible to perform? How should one perform it? Does he have to perform it immediately? Should it be perform it before the prayer that comes in next? Likewise, uh, uh, should there be uh, a order if he missed more than one? And the likes like this, this is the issue that the author he is clarifying. Or these are some of the issues that are understood from these narrations that come after uh, that which has proceeded. So therefore, the topic now that we discuss is about As-Salat Al-Fa'ita. It's known as As-Salat Al-Fa'ita. And this is the prayer that is performed, uh, or, or the, this is the prayer that is missed, and it's not performed in its proper time. And the prayer that is missed and not performed in its proper time, any, the time for the prayer has come and then goes and leaves before the prayer can be established, this would be for two reasons. One would be a legislative reason, like for example, the person forgot, or the person slept and woke up after the time, and he, without negligence. And he, he slept, but he took the means to wake up, but did not wake up. Or the other type is whenever a person, he would be negligent, and he would delay that prayer and not pray it on time, on purpose, without any excuse, except for laziness. He would delay it until the time is gone, and then uh, that prayer would be considered fa'ita. So the ruling with regards to making this prayer up and how to make it. And it's also known that the issue is called qada as-salat al-fa'ita. To make up the missed prayer. To make up uh, the missed prayer. So it's very uh, suitable to mention this issue after mentioning the, the times of the prayer. And the obligatory times that the prayer must be performed in. Because sometimes there are events or affairs that occur to an individual in one's life, in circumstances sometimes that one cannot avoid, and it may cause him to miss the prayer. And it may cause him to miss the prayer, for example, sleeping or becoming preoccupied with something until he forgot. Or sometimes a, a person will forget and think that he prayed, but he did not, and remember later, so on and so forth. And there are rules uh, with regards to this. There are rules with regards to this. Just as there were, were, were rules with regards to the time of the prayer. For example, we've seen that the prayer will not be accepted and is not correct until the time comes in. Until the time comes in. And also the time is also the reason for the obligation of that prayer. So nor is the prayer correct before it comes in, and nor is it, and not, and, and nor is it obligatory. So the prayer is not correct when it, before it comes in, and nor is it obligatory. So we have seen this previously. So this is with regards to the one who is ignorant, or the one who did it on purpose, or the one who is forgetful. If an individual he prayed before the prayer came in, his prayer is not accepted. Re whether he did it on purpose, or whether he was forgetful, or whether he was ignorant. In, in, in all cases, the, uh, the issue here is he must redo the Salat. Somebody prayed, he thought it was Maghrib. He prayed five minutes before Maghrib. He thought it was Maghrib. And then after he makes Taslim, he hears the Adhan go off. In his mind, he thought Maghrib came in, and he prayed the Maghrib entirely, and then after that, his watch beeped and he noticed that the time was just now. Or he realized in one way or another that the Maghrib had just came in after he finished the prayer. Or while he is in the middle of the prayer. For example, then this person, his prayer is invalid and he must start again. And he must re-pray. Even if he did not know. 
because the prayer must be performed in its proper time and it's not accepted before that. And it's not accepted before that, except for the one who has an intention, he's going to combine a prayer. If he's combining a prayer, he already prayed the prayer, and then he's combining the one with that prayer in a certain situation, then it's allowed. But in general, whoever prayed the prayer before its proper time has entered, then it will not be accepted, regardless whether he did that for out of forgetfulness or if he was ignorant of the ruling and the time, or even if he did it on purpose. So now we see uh, what would happen if somebody, he delayed it until after its time. If the prayer was delayed until after its time. So these are the issues that we discuss in the, the narrations of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Abu Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu uh, anhuma. So we see that this affair is on the day of Al-Handaq. And this is also known as Yawm Al-Ahzab. And this was in the fifth year of the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it's known as Yawm Al-Khandaq or Ghazwatu Al-Khandaq. The day of the trench or the battle of the trench. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions, they dug a trench around Medina on the northern side. Uh, and uh, this is the side that they were expecting for the enemy to attack them. Whenever they knew of the coming of Quraysh and the Ahzab and the different tribes to come to try to conquer and raid Medina, they had fortified the city from uh, the southern from the southern portion, and the sides are fortified because there are two places known as, as Al Harra, Al Harratani. On the, on the Shark and on the Gharb, the place where the land is burnt, and it's not possible for the people to enter on these sides where the land is, is, is burnt on the sides of Medina, and the rocks are very harsh and black. And this is something that is known in Harratani, uh, Al Sharqiya wa Gharbiya in Medina. So then, uh, that which was uh, compromisable or that which the entrance was weak was in the northern part of Al Medina. So, Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhu, he suggested to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they dig trenches, and this is what they done. And they dug a trench around that, or, uh, that area to prohibit uh, the Ahzab and the Mushrikun from entering. So on this day, as I mentioned also, or in this battle, it was several days, and uh, there, it's mentioned there were 10,000 of them of the enemies of the pagans who come to Medina and 4,000 of them were and the fighters muqatil muqatilun and uh, 4,000 of them from from Quraysh and the leader of Quraysh on that day was Abu Sufyan was Abu Sufyan but now whenever we mention his name we say radiyallahu anhu because in the, after the conquest of Mecca Allah guided him and he accepted Islam and after that he he became from the soldiers and fighting uh, on the side of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam along with him and also after that with his companions, and his, his, his Islam was good, radiallahu anhu, and likewise his son Muawiyah, radiallahu uh, anhuma wa an sahabiti ajma'in. So in any case, on this day, uh, they were preoccupied uh, by fighting and battling uh, the pagans, and all the way to the extent he, that they were not able to perform the, the, the Asr prayer. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made dua against them. Mala Allahu quburahum wa buyutahum nara. In the narration of Ali, may Allah fill their, their graves and their homes with fire. May Allah fill their graves and their homes with fire. Kama shagaluna an salat al wusta. Just as they have preoccupied us from the middle prayer. Hatta ghabat al shams. All the way until the sun set. Hayani kama shagaluna ay al hawna wa manauna. And if they uh, uh, here it means they preoccupied them. They preoccupied them and they prohibited them from praying the prayer all the way until the sun set. So we see the benefit here. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was very upset. And the fact that he missed the prayer and he was, he was preoccupied with this affair. And he, not uh, complaining about the dangers of the, of the battle and of facing the enemy and having these, this amount of men coming to raid them and attempt to harm them and like, and, and the people of Al Madinah. But what he's concerned with is that they had preoccupied him from Salat. That they had preoccupied him from Salat. May Allah fill their graves and their, and their houses with fire just as they had prohibited us from praying the middle prayer. All the way till the sun set. So this shows the, the the status and the greatness of the of the prayer in the heart of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And how could that not be? Whenever this prayer was made obligatory 
to him whenever upon him and his ummah whenever he was brought to the heavens in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no with no with no mediator and Allah spoke to him directly sallallahu alayhi wasallam so the prayer here has a, a great status in the heart of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the fact that he was made to miss it was something that was great and and magnified and, and it was a great affair and not light in his heart sallallahu alayhi wasallam and it's very benefiting uh, for a believer to follow him in that. And that the prayer it has a high rank and status in the heart uh, of a believer and the heart of a believer as well. And in the other wording of uh, Muslim, وَفِي لَفْضٍ لِمُسْلِمْ شَقُلُونَ عَنَ الصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى In this wording, it clarifies the intention of الصلاه الْوُسْطَى. What is the intent of the middle prayer? صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ شَغَلُونَ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ نَمْ And then Ali, he mentioned ثُمَ الصَّلَاةَ بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءِ And then he prayed the, the Asr between Maghrib and Isha. They preoccupied them, they preoccupied us from the middle prayer, from the prayer of, from the prayer of Asr. So this narration and likewise the narration of Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه clarifies that الصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى is the, the middle prayer, it is صَلَاةِ الْعَصْرِ والصلاه الوسطى الوسطى is the مؤنث مؤنث اوسط او مؤنث الوسط على وزن فعلى وسطى like we have احسن and we have حسنا we have افضل وفضلا like this the مؤنث of اسم تفضيل افعل فعلا نعم and this is what uh, is referred to here الوسطى so this is the feminine version of مؤنث اوسط نعم اوسط شيء خياره وافضله وَأَعْدَلُهُ The ulama they mention and the middle of something that is considered the awsat, the middle and the ma- is, is the, the one that's in the middle and the moderate path, this is the one that is the best. Somebody will say, for example, excuse me, Allah, He says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا أُمَّةً وَسَطًا يعني, يعني خياراً يعني أفضل أمة. We have made you the, the best ummah. The best ummah, يعني, but He referred to the ummah as wasata, meaning moderate in the middle. And not going to extremes and going overboard and not in any aspect of the deen and likewise not being heedless or negligent, but rather being in the middle and moderate and this is the best way. And it is known that any خيار الأمور أوسطها that the best of the affairs are the ones that are in the middle and in, that are moderate, uh, not to either extreme. So what is being referred to here, Salat al-Wusta, we translate it to mean the middle prayer, but also that what is, is understood any the best prayer. The best prayer. So from the most virtuous of prayers, and the afdal, al fudla, al wusta, al fudla. Naam as salat al fudla. The one of the most, the most virtuous prayer, is the prayer of al asr. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has referred to this prayer specifically in uh, in Surah al Baqarah. Hafilu ala salawati wa salat al wusta wa kumu lillahi qanitin. Allah He says, and preserve the prayers, maintain and preserve the prayers by performing them properly with their conditions, and with uh, their their pillars and and obligations, and with khushu and humbleness and their proper time and the likes like this. Nam, and then He mentions specific was salat al wusta, was salat was salat al wusta, and He pre- maintain and preserve the prayers and and the middle prayer, meaning especially the middle prayer. As salat al wusta, many of the ulama they differed about this, but these narrations are clear. They're clear. That Salat al Wusta is Salat al Asr. Salat al Asr. And uh, the ulama they mention, and this is because any yani, Qabla Salat al Asr, Faridatani. Faridatani. Nahariyatani. That there are two obligatory prayers in the daytime before Asr. Wa ba'd al Asr, ba'd al Salat al Asr, Faridatani, Layliyatani. That there are two obligatory prayers of the night time after it. So before Asr, we have the Fajr and the Luhur prayer, and both of them are in the daytime, from the daytime. Nam, and then after Asr, we have the Maghrib and the Isha, and they are both after the sun has set at the night from the night prayers, from the night prayers. So then, from this aspect, it is the middle, and the time, the time between the prayers is, is from the middle, but also the meaning of Al Wusta, meaning that it was uh, of referring to the virtue. The virtue of, of that prayer, the virtue of that prayer. So believer, he will maintain uh, salat al wusta and likewise the rest of the prayers as well, and fulfilling the obligation of al Islam to establish the prayer in a manner 
that is legislated in the manner that Allah has made obligatory upon upon the servants. The author, he mentioned the narration and the second wording that uh, from Muslim, and he says, uh, Ali, he mentioned the statement, radiyallahu anhu, of the Prophet, shagaluna ana salatu wusta, salat al-asr. So this, in this narration, or this wording in Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he identified Salat al-Asr as Salat, as salat al-Wusta as Salat al-Asr. But after that, Ali radiallahu anhu, he clarified a very important point of that which occurred next. And he, after they had been preoccupied, and after the affair had calmed down, and after they were able to gather, and uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was able to actually begin to establish the prayer, then he says here, ثُمَّ صَلَّاهَا بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءَ ثُمَّ صَلَّاهَا بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءَ And then he prayed it, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, between al-Maghrib and al-Isha. Between al-Maghrib and al-Isha. This wording here uh, is an important wording of this text and a very important wording with regards to understanding the issue that we mentioned in the beginning and that is qadha as-salat al-fa'ita to make up the prayer that has been missed and here we see that he made it up when sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this instance the asr prayer is the prayer that was missed salatu al-asr hiya al-fa'ita huna na'am fi hadha al-hadith this is the prayer that was missed and this narration, and then, so when will one pray it? This is the question. Ali radiallahu anhu, he says, ثُمَّ صَلَّهَا بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاء And then he prayed it between al-Maghrib and Isha. But one issue about this wording is that it could be understand between Maghrib and Isha, meaning between the time of Maghrib and the time of Isha, or he prayed it between the prayer of Maghrib and the prayer of Isha. Which one is the intent? If he prayed it between the prayer of Maghrib and the prayer of Isha, we would see that uh, he did not pray it in order, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meaning that he prayed Maghrib, and then he prayed Asr, and then he prayed Isha. And he bayna al-Maghribi wa Isha. And he bayna salatay al-Maghrib wa Isha. Is that the understanding? And this could be understood from this wording here. That he prayed it between the Maghrib and Isha, meaning the prayer of Maghrib and the prayer of Isha. From that understanding... Uh, the, the scholars, some scholars have derived that it's not obligatory to make up the prayer in order. To make up the prayer in the order. From them who mentioned that, Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala. But there are other narrations, and the author he will mention them, that clarify the intent. And uh, we mentioned the evidence here, and he will take the hadith entirely in the end of this chapter, inshallah, it's the hadith of Jabir. And in that narration, uh, he mentioned, radiallahu anhu, فَصَلَّ الْعَصْرَ بَعْدَمَا غَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسُ ثُمَّ صَلَّ بَعْدَهَا الْمَغْرِبِ So this clarifies the intent of Ali radiallahu anhu in this narration. And a benefit from this, this affair here or mentioning it in this manner is to see how the people of the Sunnah arrive to the truth and how the haq is, is obtained, the true haq, yani the pure truth that is supported by evidences is, be, is by, by gathering the text in a particular issue. And this is the way that Allah has given success to Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah. The people of the Sunnah Haqqan, they have been given success. And from the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, from their methodology in dealing with the text, is that they gather the evidences in a particular issue, and then they, uh, in this manner, they will arrive to the truth. But some of the ulama, maybe for example, Imam Shafi, he did not have that opinion. We would not say that he's not from Ahl Sunnah, that's not the intent. But what that means is possibly this evidence did not reach him, radiallahu anhu. So the ulama, they make excuses like that. But in general, the way of the of Ahl Sunnah, and from the imams of Ahl Sunnah, Imam Shafi, who can be imam in the Sunnah, wa fil aqidah, wa fil manhaj, wa fil hadith, wa Quran, rahimahullah ta'ala. Nam, so the, that should be understood properly. But here we see that there are other narrations that clarify this issue. So even as much as we love Ali Imam Shafi, rahimahullah ta'ala, if we have the narration of the Prophet or the events that occurred in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what comes first is it's a statement of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Sunnah of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But uh, other than uh, than him, Ali Imam Shafi, the rest of the four Imams, they all have the opinion that is uh, verified and based upon this narration. That he said, uh, Radiallahu anhu, Jabir, 
Then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prayed Asr after the sun set, and then after that he prayed Maghrib. He prayed Asr after the sun set, and then after that sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prayed Maghrib. This is the opinion of Abu Hanifa and likewise. Uh, Imam Malik and also Ali Imam Ahmed that it's an obligation to for, to pray the missed prayer in order in order, and the evidence is here in the wording that is found uh, in Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith of Jabir. فصلى العصر بعد ما غربت الشمس ثم صلى بعدها المغرب that he prayed Asr after the sunset. Any in this event here, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then he prayed after that at Maghrib. So even though the Maghrib had come in. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had a prayer to make up, and this is a, and this is the benefit here, and he did not uh, give pre- precedence to al hadira al thaita. Rather, bada sallallahu alaihi wasallam bil thaita, thumma sal al hadira fi waktiha. So he began with the prayer that was missed, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then after that he prayed the prayer that was in at that time. He prayed the prayer that was in at at that time. So this is the issue here. And uh, with regards to the fa'ita, also it has been narrated authentically from Anas radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ نَسِيَ الصَّلَاةً فَلْيُصَلِيهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا لَا كَفَارَةَ لَهَا إِلَّا ذَلِكَ That whoever forgot a prayer, then he should pray it whenever he remembers it. And there is no expiation for that except for, except for that. There is no expiation for the prayer except for that. And one of the narrators in the hadith, and he, Qatada, he, after this, he, after narrating the, the hadith, he narrated the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَقِيمَ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And established a prayer for, for my remembrance. And he had the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah At-Taha. There are other wordings likewise. These are wordings from uh, Imam Muslim. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ نَسْيَ صَلَاةً أَوْ نَامَ عَنْهَا and another one he says, إِذَا رَقَدَ أَحَدُكُمْ عَنَ الصَّلَاةِ أَوْ غَفَلَ عَنْهَا فَلْيُصَلِّهَا إِلَى ذَكَرَهَا فِنَّ اللَّهَ يَكُولْ أَقِيمَ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ That if somebody forgot the prayer, or he slept during the time of the prayer, or if somebody was heedless about the prayer, and he forgetful, and he, or, or he, and he just uh, completely slipped his mind and the likes like this, then he should pray the prayer whenever he remembers it. So therefore, the time for that prayer, if somebody became preoccupied from the prayer or he forgot the prayer, the, the time for it to be made up is whenever he remembers it. The time that it should be made up is whenever he remembers it. Whenever he remembers it. Ma'am? So then it should be made up immediately. It should be made up immediately whenever the person remembers it or whenever the person wakes up or whenever the person is not preoccupied anymore. And uh, as for the issue here of being preoccupied, the ulama, they mentioned that this narration occurred before the the, the ruling of Salat al-Khawf had been revealed. And there is a specific prayer that is prayed whenever one is in fear. And it's also in the time of war. But you know, whenever a person is afraid, there's a, there's a manner to pray. And there's a way to pray. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa established that. There's a chapter, inshallah, we'll discuss that. That particular prayer, Salat al-Khawf, the prayer, the, the, the prayer of fear. How to establish the obligatory prayer while one is afraid of an enemy or while one is afraid of some danger or some harm from a wild animal or from another issue like this. There's a manner to establish that. And even Allah has mentioned in His book, فَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ فَرِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا And if you are afraid, then pray while you're standing or while you're riding. And uh, the ulama, they mentioned that this was revealed after this event here, after this event. So therefore, even if a person was preoccupied in battle, then the prayer came in, he, sh- he should pray still and establish the prayer in the manner that is legislated, Salat al-Khawf. And that is to be established uh, for, and first and foremost in congregation. And if not, even while one is walking or standing or sitting or riding, but the prayer should be uh, uh, prayed at its earliest time, or excuse me, it should be prayed in its proper time. It should be prayed in its proper time. And Allah knows best. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.